Hello, today I'm going to show you how to build a fusion reactor using mechanism version 9. Uh, this reactor produces um, an enormous amount of energy. Um, there's different levels you can set it to produce more or less. Uh, but this is basically kind of the in game energy production generator and mechanism. Um, so to start, you're going to want uh, two evaporation plants like this set up. Um, I already have a video on how to make these, so I'm not going to really explain how to make them. Uh, but if you don't know, watch the video first and then come back to this one. Uh, but you just need one making brine and then feed the brine into another one to make uh, the liquid lithium. Um, so before we even make the reactor, we need to make the fuel for the reactor. And so we need uh, deuterium and tritium. Um, so first, I'm going to show you how to make the deuterium. Um, so the first thing you're going to need is... Uh, basically another water source kind of like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just set that up here. Uh, now we're going to build this reactor at the lowest setting, at the inject injection rate of 2. Um, and for that you're only going to need a minimum of uh, two electric pumps without any upgrades. Uh, I would probably recommend doing more just in case, uh, but I'm just going to build two. And uh, you're going to want to put in uh, filter upgrades into these because instead of, we don't need normal water, we need something called heavy water. And for the electric pump to get heavy water, it needs a filter upgrade. So just put it in here and it will put in the filter upgrade. Go ahead and run a power line over here. And you'll see it will start to produce the heavy water. There it is right there. Um, and so this heavy water needs to go into an electrolytic separator. And this will make the nitridium. Um, it also produces oxygen, which we don't need, so you can go ahead and dump the excess of that. And then use a pressurized tube to get the nitridium. And we're going to put this, uh, feed this into a um, chemical infuser right here. So the next thing is you need the tritium. And for that, that's what you'll need the li uh, liquid lithium for. So the first thing we need is we need to um, turn the liquid lithium into uh, lithium gas. And for that, you're going to need a rotary condensator. I'll go ahead and place it with the big side uh, to where you can connect the lithium to. Uh, we're going to use two. Um, if you're in a world where you're cycling day and night, you will need... Um, well, actually, in all cases, you, you'll need... I mean, you can always put upgrades in these to where you only need one, uh, but I'm trying to show you kind of like th what the basics of what you need without any kind of like speed upgrades. So I'm just going to uh, build two, but theoretically you could have you know, as many as you want, or just one with a speed upgrade. But at a minimum, without upgrades, you need at least two. And so on this other side, uh, you need pressurized uh, tubes. And you're going to want to set toggle operation towards uh, deconcentrating, uh, because it's turning the liquid into the gas. And I want a power line over here. And uh, by the way, I'm using basic uh, mechanical pipes and pressurized tubes because um, it's easier to kind of see if you need more, if you're having a shortage of, or a surplus of anything. Because if you use an ultimate or anything higher, it stores it up in the in the pipe a lot more, and so it's hard to really tell if you need more or less of something. So just for that purpose, I'm using a basic. And now these um, with this uh, gas lithium. You're going to need to hook up to solar neutron activators, and they actually go in the bottom, so I'm going to place them on top here. Now, um, if it's always day, because uh, these do rely on uh, the sun, so at night they don't work. So if it's always day, you really you only need one, but, since, but to compensate for nighttime, you're going to want two, so it'll store up some. So just to make sure we have enough stored up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the tritium out of the solar neutron activator and then put it into gas tank here and
put output on this side. So we're going to take out the tritium and put it on the other side of the infuser here. And hook it up to power. And uh, that will produce DT fuel. And this is the fuel that you will, that the reactor produces inside. Um, but also it's what you need to kickstart the reaction. So now that we have the fuel we need, we can actually build the reactor. So I get all these two parts here. Uh, so you're going to want to start um, with kind of like a star shape. Like this. And then you're going to want to build kind of a square like this, but without corners. Then you're going to want to build another square, but this time with corners, and then kind of do it in uh, reverse. So then square without the corners, and then the star again. Like that. Sorry for the section ones. And then you need a controller on the top. Uh, you will need three ports, so these two will be for the tritium and deuterium, and then one for the power. And then uh, you also need a laser focus matrix. And then also you could put glass up, uh, just so we can kind of see inside. I'm going to put glass here, but you don't necessarily need it. Um, yeah, so that's how you actually build the reactor. And I'm going I'm to go ahead and connect up uh, the gas. So tritium there and the deuterium here, just like that. And you'll see if you open up the controller here and you go to uh, the fuel, you'll see it filling up. And I'm going to go ahead and set this to injection rate of 2. That's the minimum. If you go to stat statistics here, you can see for air cooled, the minimum injection rate is 2. Um, so the next step is we need to build a bunch of lasers. And these lasers uh, basically... Um, Need, the way to start the reaction is you need a bunch of heat, and the lasers uh, will allow you to, to store up heat um, to create the reaction. Uh, and so to store up all of that energy, you're going to need a laser amplifier uh, with the red side facing the laser focus matrix, just like this. And I'm also going to put a lever on top. This lets us... Um, like this is what we would flip to really sell the energy into the reactor. And also we want to make sure this is on high so that it only activates when the lever is on. And then we're just going to set up a bunch of uh, lasers. And so, you know, you could literally only have one laser, but it would take a long time for it to the laser and fly to charge up. Or you could have a, a bunch and um, so it'll charge up quickly. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the lasers themselves are pretty expensive to make, so just, I mean, I would just make as many as you kind of can. I mean, you could always just wait a long time. But sometimes you might need to, you know, if you're relying on this reactor, you might want, you need to have many in case uh, it shuts down for some reason. Uh, but I'm just going to set up, um, I'm just going to kind of do a, like a little time lapse here while we wait for it to charge up, so I'm not going to set up too many lasers. But I'll kind of show you how you can set them up on all four sides. Now one thing I did forget is you will need to place uh, laser amplifiers not only at the end but in between where any time lasers come together to kind of like redirect the heat. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and place uh, another laser amplifier kind of like in a row right here. Uh, make sure the red faces towards the reactor. Um, make sure you place those before you connect the power lines because or else it'll start to, lasers will start to destroy the blocks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run a cable here. And uh, now you'll be able to see the laser uh, light up there. So I connect them to the power. Uh, and by the way, these do take a lot of power. So, you know, you don't make a lot of them if you don't have a strong power source to begin with because, you know, it'll just be a waste because it'll just shut down. But also it's important to know that you don't need them when the reactor's running since that you only need those lasers to actually start it. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up while I'm building it. Um, I'm going to build it on all four sides. 
Uh, another thing important to note is that these lasers are like dangerous, uh, so I mean I'm in creative mode, but you can see I'm kind of getting lit on fire, so they will hurt you, so be careful not to kind of get in their way. Um, I'm just doing this to kind of show you that you can put the lasers in all four orientations uh, to kind of set it up efficiently. So yeah, I got uh, the lasers set up on all four sides, and at this point we just need to wait until uh, the laser amplifier is has enough charge, so if I open it up, uh, you'll see that it's charging up slowly. Uh, we need to wait until it's about 1.5 gigajoules. Uh, so it might take a while. Um, you can add more lasers to make it faster, make sure you have a strong power source. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward until we have it charged up enough. Okay, so now it's charged up. We got about 1.6 gigajoules and we're ready to go. So now it's time to actually get ready to start the reactor. Uh, one thing you will need is a thing called a holerong. Uh, this is kind of like the thing that actually like helps start the reaction and you, you need to fill it up so you want to open up this chemical infuser with the DT fuel and put it right here to fill it up so it says ready for reaction Then you're going to want to put it inside right here the slot and then all you got to do is flip this lever and you will see the reaction start and if you open up the reactor you'll be able to see the heat now you will see that it's cooling down that's, a, that's just because we have it set to an injection rate of 2 uh, it will eventually level out, but make sure that the plasma doesn't get below 100 uh, MK or else it'll shut down. And you can also see uh, how much power it's producing as well. Uh, it'll store up there until you take it out. And then if we go ahead and go to the fuel tab, uh, we can change the injection rate. So I'm going to change it to 4. And then you will be able to see how the plasma begins to heat up and how uh, it'll produce more energy as it heats up. But I'm just going to set it back uh, to 2 so it doesn't run out. But yeah, that's how you make a fusion reactor mechanism. Uh, just a reminder, the way I have this set up, this is like the absolute minimum you need to have uh, because you have to have at least a ejection rate of 2. Um, so if you want to have anything higher than that, you'll need to add more neutron activators and more ultralaric separators, more electric pumps, etc. Um, and then you might have to tweak uh, the uh, thermal evaporation plants to make sure you have enough lithium here. Um, I didn't really optimize that, so it's really hard to tell with the day-night and how hot it gets. Uh, but it should be fine with just uh, two plants there. Uh, you just might have to worry about it at night. Uh, but yeah, that's how you set up a reactor. Thanks for watching. Bye.